Don't miss out. Get your free copy of Dr. Guido Holzman's How Inflation Destroys Civilization. Visit Mises.org slash issues free and we'll send you the book. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. You probably haven't even noticed the great chocolate crisis of 2024, but it is real and some of us are very concerned. The wholesale price of cocoa, which comes from the coca bean, is the main ingredient in chocolate and its price has skyrocketed. When the Spanish conquistadors came across cocoa 500 years ago, it was used by the Aztecs of Mexico in a drink form combined with hot peppers. Talk about hot chocolate. It was called the food of the gods. And on the Thornton Necessity Index, it comes in at third place behind electricity and gasoline. Americans on average consume it every day, or at least they wish they did. 20 years ago, the price of coca was about $1,500 a metric ton. Wholesale coca is traded in the futures market where chocolate makers contract with coca suppliers for trades in the near future. It's sold in 10-ton chunks. That makes a lot of candy bars. Ever since the housing bubble inflation, the price has risen and stayed within a range of around $2,500. It broke an all-time high of $3,600 around this time last year and has been skyrocketing ever since. Lately, the price has been over $11,000 a ton. How could this happen and what does it mean for the price of my candy bars? Is it speculators, the Federal Reserve, or just normal supply and demand conditions? Well, it's all of that. Monetary inflation from the Federal Reserve has raised prices across the board. Gold, after all, is at an all-time high. However, the Fed's inflation has masked over the fact that in the prior 40 years before this crisis, the inflation-adjusted market price of coca, like most other commodities, has actually declined, and in this case, by over 65%. The journalistic accounts of this crisis have pushed climate change, so it's being intentionally manipulated by the media. As usual, the climate change explanation would be hard-pressed to explain crop production that is highly concentrated in small areas such as Western Africa. The major decrease in supply is indeed partly due to weather in the small area of Western Africa, which is the world's leading supplier. And it is experiencing different weather conditions that harm this crop production. However, this area experiences periodic weather changes related to El Nino and La Nina-like weather patterns that are currently impacting crop production in that area. Those patterns should soon reverse, and other growing areas may benefit from those same weather patterns. In contrast to the chicken little climate change hysterics, the sky is not falling on the chocolate market. Higher coca prices have translated into higher chocolate prices over the last year. As expected, the higher chocolate prices have already translated into declining sales for chocolate products. Producers and consumers have responded predictably to this crisis. If indeed a crisis is of a longer-term variety, the market is already prepared. The supply of coca and chocolate takes a long time to adjust due to the nature of growing, harvesting, and producing the products. As a result, speculators have entered the market and driven the raw material price much higher and taken part of that supply and put it into speculative inventory. This has the chocolate makers responding as well. Some of the speculators have already made a great deal of money, but if the crisis subsides and the longer-term crisis fails to emerge, many could lose substantial investment dollars. Nevertheless, I would imagine that other investors are investing in longer-term projects to grow coca, both inside and outside the area impacted by this weather pattern. After all, chocolate is a good source of caffeine, magnesium, and is rich in theobromine and phytonutrients, 
which address a large variety of health problems. So there should be a strong demand for the crop in the future. So take solace, chocolate lovers. While higher prices caused by the Federal Reserve are probably here to stay, the market is doing what it can do to make sure that everyone continues to have access to Reese's Cups, even if they contain a few more peanuts and a little less chocolate while adjusting to these changing market conditions. <laughs>